Warning. Channel Robozoid contains adult language, adult content, strong opinions, and verbal brutality. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, fellow patriots. It is I, the Robozoid, your semi-likable and occasionally tolerable curmudgeon of the YouTube airwaves, coming at you with yet another video. This time... We have to talk about this because this is incredibly interesting. The only reason it's interesting is because, well, we're talking about what kind of, what kind of men N NPR hires, because they clearly don't go for real men. I mean, obviously, they don't go for the alpha male, they go for the beta male. And in this case, what we're talking about, of course, is the fact that it seems like anybody with a rather effeminate sounding voice or anybody with a lisp in their voice that's a little bit lispy and a little light in the loafers, and probably waves like this. Well, that's the kind of man that NPR is hiring these days, because God forbid they hire any straight men, let alone any straight white men on NPR. So we're actually gonna actually take a look here at, uh, or listen rather, because we have audio footage from an NPR conversation about masculinity and about women bearing children, which actually, when you think about it, those things, those two things really don't go hand in hand. They really don't go hand in hand when you think about those two factors put together, uh, only because it just sounds so strange coming from three gay men who are actually monitoring the activities of a straight couple, and I believe a straight white couple to boot. So... In a moment, we'll actually play some of that audio, but first, here's a little bit of a, uh, of an, of a uh, tweet that was actually written to try to debunk this whole thing, and I think they do a fairly good job of it, so let's take a read here. All right, so here's a tweet from a guy named Austin Allred, whom I hope has no blood relation whatsoever, to Gloria Allred. If so, he's got to be the black sheep of the family. So listen to this. Okay, it reads... In one of the most fascinating broad podcasts I had ever listened to, the members of NPR's This American Life got their testosterone levels tested. All the males had it, had ever, had, had even low testosterone, somehow even lower than, uh, somehow enough, enough doctors recommended medication. <laughs> okay, it gets funnier from here, actually. The trans guest talks about how taking testosterone made them suddenly interested in science. Science! Seriously? That's what it actually read? It gets even funnier from here, as a uh, obviously gay man here is trying to debunk or put down straight men and uh, put down the idea of the alpha male and uh, basically just say that since he's a Kamala supporter, that yes, He's basically got the right to tell women what to do with their bodies and basically say, okay, here's what you're going to do. You're just going to have an abortion and that's it. Why? Because I'm a liberal gay man and there's going to be no argument about it. Because, right, with the uh, liberals, there's never any room for debate or discussion. So take a look. Happens at the same time as the myths around America that we see. Now listen to this guy's uh, lispy voice. As men are expected to be protectors and providers, are going out into economy that doesn't really allow for that, especially for working class folks. And sort of like compounding on that, uh, you know, masculinity as a trope has been co-opted by the MAGA right into something that feeds into and exacerbates the loneliness epidemic as well as the, mm, the MAGA right end up leading to really destructive behaviors. We aren't the only ones that are hurt by these things, black and brown people, LGBTQIA plus people, especially trans women and indigenous people. Uh, and you know, uh, yeah, fake women and Indians. Society have been historically and often still today are marginalized and being hurt, demonized, and uh, even, like mar marginalized even further. So, and if you think that was ridiculous, well, just get a whiff of this. And I hope you don't mind my deconstructing every every single scene from this, every single word that is spoken by the PMS NBC reporters as they try to justify abortion and gay rights, and they try to justify the whole rainbow alphabet, FDBT people, FDBTQIA, 
X, Y, Z people, or whatever these people call themselves today. I'd like whatever these fellas call themselves today. So let's just have a look at that, shall we? Trying to own masculinity in the most regressive sort of misogynist way possible. J.D. Vance Ooh, lecturing everybody misogynist. on what a family Ooh. what it needs to be a man. Donald Trump obviously has his own version of manhood. To see Tim Walls out there as a man. It's too bad you've never had a man. Joyfully embracing his role as the vice potential vice president to the woman, the nation's first female president. Is Over my live body. Also to see his son weeping for his father in a deeply tender and emotional way. <laughs> because I think this hasn't been talked about enough to see Democrats what a champion wimp. men as voices on reproductive choice yeah. as you saw yesterday I believe from Amanda Zorowski's husband tonight from Tim Walls talking about struggles with infertility it takes two partners to get pregnant uh -uh. it takes a man and a woman has been relegated to women or the carriers of, of pregnancies and it is I think way overdue to have men express not only their their sort of their stake in all this but also their anguish and to have a football coach yeah. talk about the anguish of infertility i think opens up a whole new conversation about the the, the stakes at hand for for 2024 and by the way and, and i love that you're saying that because yeah. look at the basketball heads yeah. and in the democratic party the coach that is saying that it was it's important for him as the football coach to be you, know, partner, you could use Tim Walz's head as a political uh, football, as far as I'm concerned. Like, that's something important for me to do, because if a coach is doing it, it's going to have just a little more salience, right? And it's going to help kids not get bullied. I mean, I, I Ooh, really think we're so that worried that about bullies. Oh, 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 masculinity that is simply 21st century masculinity. Speaking of 21st century masculinity, <laughs> how about that? How about that? How about that? How about that? So while well, PMSNBC is making fun of the whole idea of masculinity, toxic masculinity as it were, and of course trying to prove their manhood because, you know, Trump shows his manhood in a different way and these people show their manhood in other ways. Uh, yeah, that's because Trump's an alpha male and these little fruity guys that you hire on both PMSNBC and NPR, they are beta males. That's all they've ever been their whole lives, beta males with mommy issues. And speaking of mommy issues, let's listen to ex exactly what I told you we were going to talk about here in the body of this video. I said listen because there is no video footage of this at all. It's the three guys from, NP from NPR who are a little bit uh, light in the, loof in the loafers, shall we say. Um, quite frankly, who put down the idea of masculinity, or at least the alpha male, which is not a word I'm not afraid to use. I don't mind using the word alpha male because that's what straight, strong men are. And those are the kind of men that women like. Women do not respect weak, soft, feta, pathetic beta males. They don't. And these three guys here on NPR are absolutely no exception. So let's just take a good look at these guys before we even bother taking a listen, okay? Now, unfortunately, I don't have any video of this of this at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, unfortunately, I have no video footage of this at all since, well, this is NPR, it's radio, and the only thing that we've got here is really audio. But nevertheless, the audio quality is great, and so we might as well take a listen to it and find out exactly what these beta males have to say about real alpha males. Don't think that I don't like using the term alpha males, because I actually do. It separates the real men from, well, let's say, the uh, soy boys. One notable difference between the men and the women, although none of the women wanted to have much testosterone, Alex, Todd, and I very, very much wanted to win. Jonathan claimed he did not want to win, but none of us... Who are these guys, the ambiguously gay trio? ...interest in winning at all, but then proceeded immediately, I mean immediately, to talk smack about his opponents in a very competitive way. Yes. And that was the state of things. Well, yeah, that was the fate of things. Days ago. All right, well, it is uh, two days before our broadcast day as I record this. Our entire staff is on mic, plus contributors uh, David Rakoff and Sarah Val in New York. Hello, all. Hello. Hi. 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 
And now for the results, I am opening the envelope. Wow, that's fascinating. <laughs> wow, that's just incredible. Okay, among the man, uh, Rakoff is number one and has like twice the amount of testosterone of anybody in the group. <laughs> Wow. I told you. I voted for you, Rekha. Oh, everybody's trying to get in with him now that he's number one. <laughs> uh, then in order, the men are, um, it's Rakoff, then Alex at number two, uh, then me, like a point behind you, Alex, then Jonathan, and then Todd, all very closely grouped together. Todd. Uh, Rakoff has twice as much. As any of us, the gay Canadian Jew living in Manhattan. Okay, we, we really have to dispense with the Canadian <laughs> but actually, that is non-corollary. <laughs> Believe me. What are, what are the numbers exactly? What, what is, I'm what the is only you? woman here, and none of you want to do me. You're 144. I'm 144. Oh, my God. <laughs> when I looked at the women's results in the envelope, even though she is seven months pregnant, Julie was on top. As Not by any of you guys. Well, that's hard. That's hard. It makes me feel really bossy and, and aggressive. Um... Now, did they say that the that the pregnancy would affect it at all? Alex, you <laughs> she talk says trying to make sure you get in that whole girly pregnancy thing. Yeah, yeah. the fact that I'm that I'm able to bear children, <laughs> <laughs> the greatest gift a woman can have. <laughs> I have to say, Wendy and Todd, lowest scoring woman and man on the staff, really did not seem very happy about this whole thing by the end. Todd, like most of the men on the staff had never been seen as especially manly during his life. But he thought maybe here, maybe here in this group, compared to the rest of us, he might at least stand a chance. Someone would be girlier than I. If I can't be the most manly in public radio, where the hell can I be the most manly? Like, I kind of wish this was Sports Center, because then I'd be okay. Like, out of all my staff members, or fellow staff members at Sports Center, okay, I could be the one with the least testosterone. But in public radio. We should get them to spit. Is it a real place, Sports Center? Is it a thing? Now, see, that's not fair. How can he, how can he have the most testosterone and not know what Sports Center is? I know what Sports Center is. <laughs> I know I shouldn't be laughing at these goons. I should be shouting at them and screaming at them. But they are just so cringe and stupid and ridiculous that... You can't really get angry at these guys. All you can do is just laugh at them. Just point and laugh at how incredibly stupid they are. I mean, we're talking about three... We're talking about three little beta males, three little soy boys here, who are clearly never going to experience the touch of a woman because no woman in her right mind would ever want these little losers. These guys are twerps. They're twinks. They are stereotypically gay. I mean, there are macho gay guys like Freddie Mercury was who didn't speak with a lisp, just tended to spit a little when he talked, like Daffy Duck. But then, and then again, well, you've got these little guys with their little prancy voices. I suppose YouTube will get pissed at me for even making fun of them. Well, tough shit, YouTube. This is my channel, and you have no say in my content any longer. And besides, Rumble treats me better than you do. But that's the whole point here. You see, the whole point is these guys are beta males who will never understand what uh, love between a man and a woman means and that expression of love, uh, the act of reproduction. So quite frankly, I just think it's really ridiculous <clears throat> that these guys are champions of abortion when they will never experience it. I mean, you talk about inconsistency. So I would, I would not understand if you champion abortion so much, why are you worried about ever having one when you never will? I mean, I could say the very same thing for lesbians. So let's face it here. You're calling the, you're calling the, you're the pot calling the kettle black. And well, quite frankly, I'm the straight man calling you a beta male and a soy boy. That's just the way things work. So yeah. Let's just put this all out of our heads. Let's just pretend this video never happened because uh, I am not going to talk about this subject any further. The reason why? 
the scrutiny is just silly. Uh, what the what the three what the three fellas are talking about is nonsensical, and quite frankly, it's just all over stupid. And I've reported some dumb stories before, but this one was just plain dumb. This has been the Robozoid saying. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash this like, smash the like button, subscribe to this channel. Also, make sure you're still subscribed, share this video with friends, and also family members. You never know. You might actually change a few opinions that way. Also, of course, remember that wokeness is weakness, because NPR and MSNBC have not learned that lesson, and likely never will, even though CNN is starting to. That's a subject for another time. Uh, just remember, of course, you know, power of our voices, the power to the music in the streets, be here or be nowhere.